Hey everyone, in this video, we're gonna be finding the real and imaginary parts of complex numbers. Specifically, in this video, we're gonna be finding the real and imaginary parts of part A of problem 1.2, which can be found in your free online complex analysis textbook. And I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check that out. So, to solve this problem, to find the real and imaginary components of part A, Z minus A divided by Z plus A, where A is a real number and Z is a complex number, a good first go-to strategy that I highly recommend is to write all of your complex numbers in terms of its real and imaginary parts. So I'm gonna write Z as X plus Y, I, where X and Y are real numbers. So X and Y are real numbers, and so now I clearly see what part of Z is real and what part of Z is imaginary. So let's rewrite this fraction. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna combine my real numbers and my complex, my real terms and my complex terms together. And so in the numerator, you might notice that X minus A is a real number because both X and A are real numbers. X is a real number and a is a real number. So I can rewrite this as x minus a plus y times i divided by x plus a plus yi. And the reason I do that is because I notice that I have an imaginary part in a denominator and a really good heuristic, another good go-to strategy that I highly recommend, is to get rid of all of the imaginary parts in any denominators. And the way you do that is you multiply your, your denominators by the complex conjugate. And so I'm gonna multiply the denominator here by the complex conjugate, which is x plus a minus yi. I flip the sign of the imaginary part. Now I can't just multiply by whatever number I want because that'll probably change the number. So I need to make sure I multiply by one because multiplying by one doesn't actually change the number. So I need to make sure my numerator here is also the same. That way this whole number right here just equals one. And so I'm just multiplying by one. All right, so let's expand this out. It's gonna get a little messy, but just bear in mind, you're gonna have to do it at some point. So like I said, this is one messy multiplication. This looks gross but it does simplify a little bit. So let's try to combine like terms and simplify. We can also FOIL and expand some terms. So let's do all that. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply these two terms by FOILing. And then I'll do the same for negative Y here. Keep in mind that there is an I right here that I have to keep in both terms. I'll do the same thing with this YI in both of these terms. And then last but not least, y i squared is just y squared i squared, but i squared is negative one, and so the negatives make a positive. Okay, so still looks messy, but again, we can clean things up. The way we're gonna clean this up is I'm gonna separate this fraction into two different fractions. Specifically, I'm gonna group together the terms that are real, and I'm gonna group the terms that are purely imaginary together. Okay, so I split up my fractions and simplified a bit, so let me explain what I did. So first, I grouped together my real terms, my x squared minus a squared plus y squared. Those are all strictly real numbers. There are no imaginary components to either of those. And that's how I got my first fraction here with this denominator, which I'll talk about that denominator in a moment. And then my second fraction is just the rest of the fraction. Now notice here that none of these terms have an I and that's because I factored out the I to make it very clear that I have my real component and my imaginary component. Now, a couple things I wanna mention here. The denominator. How do I know that denominator is a real number? Like I know the numerator is a real number because I specifically picked the real numbers in my numerator here. 
But if that denominator is a, has a complex number or an imaginary part, then I haven't split up my number into its real and imaginary part yet. And so how do I know that denominator is a real number too? Well, that's because by construction, in the beginning, we multiplied right here by the complex conjugate. And when you multiply a complex number by its complex conjugate, the output will always, always, always be a real number. And so because of that, my denominator is a real number and my numerator is a real number. And so this whole term here is a real number. How do I know that that's my imaginary part? Well, we have to first make sure that what's in the circle doesn't include an imaginary part because I want the whole point of pulling out this eye right here on the right is so that I don't have any eyes in the imaginary part or the real part. But again, the denominator is the same. And this numerator is strictly the multiplication and addition of real numbers, which by itself is a real number. And so both of these fractions are real numbers. And so I have a real number plus a real number times i, or you can write it as s plus ti or x plus yi. I don't want to use x and y because we already used those letters, but this is clearly of the form s plus ti, where this is s and the second fraction is t. And that's it. That's how we get our real and imaginary parts. And you might say, hey, we could simplify this xy here. Sure, do it. And you can simplify the ay's to get two ay's. Sure, go for it. But the problem asks to find the real and imaginary component, and clearly I've done that. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.